IPv6 addresses can look long and confusing, so let's take a few minutes and talk about the IPv6 global unicast address structure. So let's take a look at an IPv6 address. Let's say this one. All right, looking at this address, the first half, or the first four hex dots, the first half of our uh, IP address is the network ID. And we know that's the network ID because of this slash 64 here at the end. This slash 64 is our prefix length. Now the prefix length works exactly the same way in IPv6, it'll, a subnet mask works in IPv4. If something is covered by the prefix, in this case, the first half of our address, that becomes our network ID. Anything that's not covered by that prefix is part of our interface ID. The network ID is broken down into two pieces. So the first part of it, which is going to be these first three hextets, that's gonna be your global routing prefix. Now your global routing prefix is gonna be assigned by your ISP. It is going to be unique to your organization only. It is a globally unique routing prefix. And routers all over the world are gonna use that prefix to direct traffic to your network. Now this last hextet, these last 16 bits in the network ID, they are used for local subnetting. So unlike IPv4, we don't have to borrow bits from the interface portion of our address or the host portion of the address in IPv4 to uh, subnet a network. Now we can, we just don't have to. And if you do, the recommendation is to subnet on the nibble boundary or every four bits so that the break between the network ID and the interface ID will always be at a hex character. So, that gives you a quick breakdown of the structure of an IPv6 global unicast address.